and they're off for the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle Grade 1 over three miles, Noble Yates and on the outside, Asterian Falange are the first two early, Dashiell Drasher and then Flooring Porter, Buddy One on the heels of the leaders towards the inside, Crambo racing alongside Paisley Park as they go over the first flight of hurdles. It was Sir Gerhard who was the back marker and last but one over the first was Syed de Berle. On towards flight number two of the 12, Asterian Falange and Noble Yates, the first two. Florian Porter, not that fluent on the inside, just a little awkward as they now race on towards the third taken in quick succession. Asterian Falange comes to it now with a clear advantage of a couple of lengths, a mistake by Janadil at the back of the field. Rider Jody McGarvey just had to slip the reins and now is detached by about a length and a half as they make the run around the first turn and on towards the flight taken on the uphill climb. Asterian Falange leads by a couple of lengths. Flooring Porter through on the inside of Noble Yates now in a dispute of second and third. Dashiell Drasher is racing in fourth. Then Crambo and Buddy One on the outside Tupo as they go over the next flight. Paisley Park. Then a white trip for Sir Gerhard. He's racing at the moment alongside Home by the Lee and Side of Burley. And the back marker is Janadil. And very shortly they'll be turning to make the run down the hill. Still about a furlong and a half to go now before they reach flight number five. And Patrick Mullins and Asterian Falange have got the lead. So they begin to make the downhill sweep. Florian Porter a length and a half away in second in the hands of Keith Donohoe. And then on the outside, Noble Yates and Harry Cobden. Dashiell Drasher and Rex Dingle towards the inside of Buddy One and then Tiopo. White trip for Sir Gerhard. He's being followed into the race by Home by the Lee and uh, Sire de Burley. Paisley Park towards the rear of the field. And still the back marker is Janadil as they prepare to rise at the fifth. And as they come to it, a change to the lead. Florian Porter has moved through to lead. Florian Porter now goes on, sent on by Keith Donohoe, the dual winner of the race, to Asterian Falange now in second, although Patrick Mullins appears unworried that he's lost the lead. He's dropped back about two lengths off Florian Porter. Then towards the inside is Dash or Drasher with Noble Yates for company. Then Tiopo, who's moved into fifth position, creeping a little closer. And so too is Sir Gerhard, the horse who's got the white blaze towards the wide outside. Janadil is still the back marker. He's about 10 lengths off the leader, who is Florian Porter, as they come up towards the flight, which will be the final flight in a circuit's time in the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle. And it is Flooring Porter who leads them towards the stands with on the inside Asterian Falange and out a little wider Noble Yates as they cross over flight number six. Dashiell Drasher made a mistake on the inside. And so leading the parade is Flooring Porter. He's out clear by a length and a half to Asterian Falange in second. Dropping back a further length and a half, Noble Yates is in third. Dashiell Drasher is in fourth position. Buddy One is in fifth. Tupo around his outside is next. They're then being followed by Crambo and home by the Lee. Paisley Park between those. So Gerhard has always gone wide. He was five round around that turn. Then Sire de Berlay and the back marker is Janadil. They've gone through their starting point. They've gone through halfway. Now they race on towards flight number seven. Flooring Porter has the lead. Flooring Porter comes towards the next. A steering for launch gets to within a length and a half in second. They're all safely over, but home by the Lee was just nudged away from that flight. Wasn't quite as fluent as Sun. Short run on towards flight number eight, and Flooring Porter still has the lead. Flooring Porter shortens into it a mistake. Half length was Asterian Falange on his outside. Both of them blundered. Noble Yates two and a half lengths away with Dash or Drasher. Then Buddy One as they cross over flight number nine. Two leaders were better there. Paisley Park hit that, didn't get very high. Ridden along now is Side of Berle. He's hit a flat spot, being driven by Mark Walsh to try and hold his position as they take the dog leg turn on towards the third from home. And as they do so, it's Flooring Porter to Asterian Falange in second. Dash or Drasher on the inside of Noble Yates and then Buddy One followed by Crambo who goes the shortest way Tiopo and then Paisley Park home by the Lee and then Sir Gerhard as they get over the third from home and the JP McManus duo are last and last but one side of LA again ridden away from that flight Janadil is the back marker 
So they're entering the final three quarters of a mile of the Paddy Power Stayers Hurdle. They just have two more flights to take, and it's the dual winner, Flooring Porter, who still has the lead by two. To a steering for Longe in second, Dashiell Drasher clinging to third, Noble Yates around his outside, and then Buddy One, Crambo ridden for the first time. Tupo is switched out wide and still traveling well, and he's followed into the race by Sir Gerhard and by home by the Lee. Paisley Park is now being ridden along. Janadil at the back of the pack with Saida Berle, who's been flat to the boards now for three quarters of a mile. Racing down towards the wings of the second from home. Tiupo on the outside, got in very tight, didn't jump it well. And it's Flooring Porter, Asterian Falange, and Noble Yates, the first three. Tiupo rallying, followed by Buddy One towards the inside, then home by the Lee. Dashiell Drasher is next, and then Sir Gerhard as they make the turn in. And they've just got one more flight to take, and Flooring Porter has the lead. Tiupo now is in hot and persistent pursuit on the inside. Buddy One is rallying. Home by the Lee is staying on as well. Four of them now virtually in line. A follow and a half to go. One flight to take and Jack Kennedy and Tiupo have taken the lead in the Stayers hurdle. Tiupo at the final flight. His lead was a length over Flooring Porter in second. Home by the Lee was over in third. Buddy One is in fourth. They've got another half furlong to go. Tiupo pouring it on. Going clear on the ropes of line, and it will be Jack Kennedy and Tiupo who take the Paddy Power Stayers hurdle. Flooring Porter in second, home by the Lee in third, and in fourth came Buddy One. Consecutive Stayers hurdles for Gordon Elliott, and a huge, a huge breath of relief, joy. How are you feeling? I look, I'm, I'm actually nearly in tears. So, to be honest, the horses have been running well all week. They know we're having seconds and thirds. It's so hard to get a winner. Um, look, this has been the plan all year. Um, delighted, delighted for Brian and Carmel and Rob and Courtney, the whole team, and Rob Coran. Uh, delighted for me and delighted for the whole team in the yard. Listen, we work very hard and, you know, hard to just get winners. We've been, we've been hitting the crossbar all week, but to be honest, I literally have tears in my eye now, I'm so, I'm so happy. But that's great to see. Like, we, want, we, we, we love seeing that emotion. I think yeah. we, we know how much, you've had plenty of winners yeah. at Cheltenham, yeah. but we know how hard it is to get winners here. The last two days for you have shown that. Yeah, look, the horses have been running well. Like, it's not that they're falling out of the screen. Like, we're just seconds and thirds, but... It was a long way up that home straight, that's all I'm going to tell you. But look, he ran a blinder, um, he just does what he has to do when he gets there. And listen, he's a horse on the way up, he's only a young horse with lights. He seemed, the, seemed to miss the one at the top of the hill, did yeah. that worry you? It did, and I thought we were getting pushed a bit wide. And Look, I'm just happy we won. Yeah. Uh, you've had a lot of confidence, it seems, the camp with this horse coming in today. Yeah. Obviously, brighter days ahead as well. Did you have this day in mind as the one where you felt you were most confident? Uh, yeah, I thought this was a big day. I thought there were two best chances this celebrator days ahead for the week. So, yeah, we're happy. And you, you and Jack, you must be delighted for Jack as well. I'm delighted. He's, he's a star. We're good friends and he, he's a great lad. Well done, Gordon. Thank you. Thanks. Chupu has won the Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle Grade 1. Jack Kennedy was, of course, on board at last in the Wizard Enclosure. I reckon it's been a frustrating week so far. Yeah, they'd all been running well, but just, just knocking on the door. So uh, great to get that one now. Yeah, delighted. Now, talk me through the race. It looked from the outside like a crawl, was it? It was. Um, it was. We went steady. Um, but I was always happy with where I was on, on my lad, um, so it was uh, fairly straightforward, yeah. Well, he's deadly, isn't he? Because yeah. not only does he stay, he's got a turn of speed, he's effective at two and a half. Exactly, exactly. He's a pleasure to ride. He makes, makes my job very easy, so uh, if they could all be like him, it would be, be a handy enough job, yeah. So talk me to the, the closing stages and when you chose to make your challenge. Um, a floor and porter just kind of got kind of a run on me. Um, and I went after him and picked him up fairly easy. And my lad, I was probably dare a shade soon on him, but he's honest. He stuck the head down and galloped to the line, yeah. And it was a bold call from Gordon from the moment that he won the Hatton's Grace to say, right, that's it, he's being put away until the festival. Yeah, no, it was ideal. He's, uh, he's very effective, fresh. So um, brilliant, brilliant call from Gordon and, and Rob Corr. So uh, delighted, yeah. What's the feeling been like in the team? Because, as you say, although you haven't been in the winners' enclosure, you know you've got the team here banging form. What's the mood been like? Yeah, the horses are in great form. Um, just, uh, like, delighted they're running well, which just frustrating. You can't get your head in front, but um, that's it. When you come over here, it's extremely competitive, so... Uh, just delighted to get that one, yeah. yeah. Gordon was a bit emotional as well, because I, I suppose he's thinking, when is this going to yeah, happen this yeah, week? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, 
No, like I said, great, brilliant for Gordon and myself and everyone involved, yeah, yeah. Floodgates now, by today's ahead? Hopefully, touch wood. Um, we'll see how we get on. We, we we like her a lot, so hopefully she backs up what we've been, been saying about her, yeah. yeah. Well, you made no secret of that, didn't no, you? No, no, but uh, ah, sure, it's it's kind of plain to be seen. She She's uh, she's decent, so just hopefully there's nothing better than her, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's richly deserved. It would have been a travesty if you'd have brought the team in such good order and not gone away with the winner, particularly the grade one winner, one that you'd laid out for the race, so well done. Thanks, thanks Lydia, thanks. Now this is a feat. I've managed to uh, persuade Brian Atchison of Rob Corr to come and talk to me. Rachel Blackmore couldn't even persuade him onto the podium after winning the Supreme on Slade Steel. Rachel had to photobomb you in order to get, <laughs> get involved I'm, with them. I'm not photogenic enough to get up. <laughs> and you've seen the ones that are with me. They're good-looking people. I'm not. <laughs> right, I'm not. But yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. It's a different... It, today is a different pressure to Monday because Monday was... I suppose we knew when the rain came it was really going to turn the race into a two-and-a-half-mile and it was sent to our suits. But today was pressure because we consciously made the decision after the Hatton's Grace, that was it. Yeah. Um, he's a horse that can't take an awful lot of right. And I went over to Gordon and Robbie and I said, just for the record now, lads, we're going straight to the, to the stairs. And you have people question you and all that and stuff like that. But like, I, I love the little quotes and my little quote is when we were going up. Do you remember the A team? Yeah. Hannibal Smith, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And that is very much what it did. And also, you must be really pleased that Troopers won for Gordon and also for Jack, because they brought their team here they in fine form and they've been yeah. knocking on the door correct. and they've finally opened. Correct, correct, correct. I said, I said to the Jack walking out, get rid of this second itis now. <laughs> Just get the job done, right? And I said, I said, I said your yard, we, we're all right. We're off the hook in terms of we've had a winner on Monday. But I said, Gordon, Gordon, Gordon needs a winner, and then Aidan Mouse or Ryan said, well, Jack needs a winner as well, right? So they're on the board now, and it's just a different pressure, you know? And it's a different pressure, Lydia. Like, when, when he was beaten last year, I really felt sorry for the horse, because he's a better horse than he showed last year. And I, to me, it's all, and the whole thing was, if he was beaten today, it was the horse didn't deserve that. He's a better horse than that. But he showed what he's up to, he showed what he's capable of, and, and I'm just so happy for the lads. Will he be back here to defend his crown this time next year? I would hope so. And how I about Slade Steele? What do you see him at? Um, I'd have to talk to Henry, but like, if, if you genuinely, if you look at it, if we win champion hurdle next year against Constitution Hill, Stateman, Lozzymouth, and Banbridge, I need to be shot because he's not that horse. So we'll, I think we'll go chase him. But I need to talk to Henry and Robbie and Rob and see what they're going themselves, you know. You must have been pleased with the decision about Irish Point because he did you proud in the champion hurdle. 100%, 100%, 100%. And there was, I woke up, I woke up at half past five on Sunday morning and for three hours looking at going reports. Where are we going? What are we doing? And a couple, three or four times in my head I flipped it that this guy wasn't going to run today because Brown was going to go thing and, and put Irish Point in and we just said right stick with the plan that was it and the plan worked beautifully now tomorrow you've got the small matter of two oh, runners two in the Cheltenham Gold Cup the Buddha's Cheltenham Gold Cup first of all Jerry Colomb presumably that Savile's run that wasn't him no I I, 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 I just wonder did, did something did he catch himself or something about two or three weeks before the race just that, that you, there was no visible there was no visible injury he just wasn't himself and as we went away and we deliberately avoided the DRF uh, just to give him, and we actually gave him a, a week off, just a week on the walk of the day, the, D, the, the week of the DRF. And I was in Gardens on Thursday and uh, I, said Jack, I said, Jack, how is it? He said, Brian, this is the best he's felt since the beginning of December. But like, you're up against a rocket, did you? I told you this in, in Aintree last year. Gallivan Deschamps is a superstar. And, um, and, and, and the other horse, the other horse for Mouse. Gentleman's game. GMG, yeah, you, you just want them to actually, I'd love Mouse, even if he was placed for Mouse, you know, and, and because uh, he, he said to me that I, he said, uh, right, we have to go over to this pub in Presbury for a pint on the Thursday night, because tradition says we always go to the pub in Presbury before a gold cup. So we're all going to the pub in Presbury now. Excellent. Right. So you just want, come here, you just don't want, you don't want to embarrass themselves tomorrow. So this is the War of Attrition 2006. That's him, that's what it was, yeah. right? That's what it was. Um, but anyway, you just don't want the lads to embarrass themselves. That's all. 
Well, I very much doubted. I mean, uh, Maris brought uh, Francisco Rocky yesterday at 50 to 1, fifth in the conference. Run a cracker, run a cracker. But that, and that's it, you know, it's for the guy. It's, 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 it's not about us, it's not about Robco. It's about Sarah, Sarah Gleason and it's about Mouse. And then it's about the, the, the lads and Gordons that ride out, Jerry. It's about the rest of the people around us. And it's about them, it's not about us. We just write the checks. We're fortunate enough to be able to write the checks. Why haven't we seen gentlemen's games since he's winning the Charlie Hall? Because he's impossible to keep sound. Right? And he's had a little nick in his um, hoof at Christmas, and that's why the Savills were out. And and the reason he went to the Charlie Hall, and I said it, was he would have beaten Jerry Kilama down Royal that time. He was in rude health. Um, but he's here now, and we have to get to 24 hours and hope nothing goes wrong, and just let the two horses take their chance. There's no pressure on them. Is he in the same kind of form? He is. He's in good form. He's in good form. The two of them are in good form, but they're not in the form of the champ, right? They're not in the form of the champ. It's, I'm fed up of saying to Greg Torley, "I'll take the horse off you. I'll just buy the horse off you now." Right? <laughs> right, right. It's great, great to hear from you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Many congratulations on your week so far. Thank Best you. of luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.